everyone, and welcome to day one of theCUBE's live coverage of Falcon 2024. We are here at the Aria. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and co-analyst, Dave Vellante. Dave, the keynotes are over. We are, we are starting 6,000 attendees here. We're starting our live coverage. It's really exciting to be I, here. I've said before, Rebecca, you and I have done, many years ago we did uh, ServiceNow, and I used to say back then, the ecosystem's got to grow. We're say, we said the same thing three years ago about Falcon and the ecosystem's clearly growing. So it's buzzing here. Indeed, indeed it is. Well, I'd like to welcome our very first guest of the day. He is Kanea Vasani, Chief Product Officer at Extra Hop. Thank you so much for returning to theCUBE. You are a CUBE veteran. I am, and uh, thank you for inviting me here. I'm really looking forward to the conversation. So you are, you're relatively new at Extra Hop. You've been there about a year now. Tell us a little bit about your company and about, and about your role as Chief CPO. Look, I've been, I've been in this business for 30 years, in the networking and security business, and when I decided to make a change a year ago, I looked around, uh, and I really fell in love with Extra Hop and what they did. I've been a big proponent of the role uh, networking equipment and network telemetry can play to secure our businesses, secure the world, and these guys just took it to the next level, right? Uh, the, the level of telemetry, both the breadth and the depth of network telemetry, and how do you mine that for interesting insights and really help solve very difficult security problems. That's what got, excited, uh, got me excited about coming here. And then you look for the team, great team, great product uh, and technology, uh, and, and that's, uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, the, the goal is to take this business and, and really scale it up. Uh, we are private equity owned right now. Um, I think in the next couple or three years, hopefully we, uh, we scale this business up and, and uh, mimic what a CrowdStrike has done in the endpoint detection and response space. We do the same thing, but in the network. We build network detection and response technology. And network and security are clearly coming together. You guys, you guys use the phrase, mo the modern NDR, network detection and response. Of course, you don't want to be legacy, you want to be modern. What makes NDR modern? I think what makes NDR modern is a couple of different things. One is the breadth of use cases an NDR can address. When NDR started, they were taking they were looking at a sliver of use cases, just behavioral analysis of network traffic. Just like with endpoint detection systems, NDRs have started to subsume a lot of the other point products in the network. An IDS product is now a feature in an NDR. A packet forensic solution is now a feature in an NDR. Asset visibility and attack surface management is a feature in an NDR. Cloud detection and response is a feature in an NDR. So, combining a lot of point products and, and consolidating them in one platform that you, need, you can deploy for everything you need from a security standpoint in the network. I think we have all come to a point where we say, hey, if you have endpoints in your network, you need an EDR. Our proposal is if you have a network, uh, then you need a modern NDR that consolidates all these use cases uh, you need to deploy one of those. So that consolidation trend, that theme continues, even though we know the innovation, you know, coming out of startups and, and, and even you know, established companies is so fast, and practitioners you know, struggle to consolidate, but this is another example of that, that trend. Where do you feel like we are in that consolidation um, initiative? Because it is a hard thing for organizations to do, because they have so many gaps so they tend to put band-aids on those cuts. Yeah, no, I think consolidation makes sense, at a, but there is, a, there is a logical unit of consolidation. Right? Consolidation taken to an extreme, it becomes a holding company. And it doesn't give any benefits to any of our uh, consumers or, yeah. or, or, uh, or right. uh, customers. So when we, see our view is that the battle for security is going to be fought in the soft because you have all kinds of detection systems out there that are throwing alerts at you. But the challenge is you don't have the time to prosecute all these alerts. So that's where we believe that this whole architecture around the SOC needs to evolve, where you have sources of telemetry, some consolidated detection and response systems that then feed all this uh, information back into pre-correlated information back into a next-gen SIM. Mm -hmm. So consolidation for everything that sits around the network. 
consolidation for all the applications around an endpoint, consolidation around everything you do in identity, for example. That's how we view the world, and we want to be that player that consolidates security, performance, and other issues around surrounding the network and bring that to the table. Right. So, so, so speaking of the battle for security, you've recently released your global ransomware trends, which is a terrifying read. Uh, do not read it before you go to bed. <laughs> you is. will be it up is. all night. <laughs> um, so talk a little bit about, about your findings in terms of the explosion of ransomware, endpoint detection, and response killers, and, and really how this underscores the need for the NDR. It is a scary world we live in. Uh, when we surveyed through this report a bunch of customers, um, a majority of the customers had 10 or more ransomware incidents in their network, in their infrastructure last year. 91% of customers had to pay ransomware, 91%. Average ransomware, two and a half million dollars of ransom, right? And in a billion dollars in ransom paid in aggregate last year. So it is a very scary place we live in. And uh, look, for a while the industry thought, you know, we have managed endpoints and we will put endpoint detection solutions on it and life's going to be great. But our, our infrastructure has become so much more complicated. We are adopting the cloud, we have work from home users, we have OT infrastructure. The coverage you get through endpoint detection solutions is about 50 to 60%. The remaining 40% is where we come in, we can give you complete visibility and the same level of protection for that remaining 30 to 40% uh, of infrastructure that is out there. That is the soft underbelly that the bad actors are going after. E-crime gangs know that if you have a CrowdStrike EDR, it's going to be tough sledging trying to get in. But if you have an unprotected device with a legacy operating system or some core infrastructure product, hey, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's free range, you can get in and do whatever the heck you want. And that's what we want to secure, right? The combination so, of an EDR and an NDR really gives you the complete protection you need in your infrastructure. And that's ROI, that's ROI economics, numerator, denominator, if you could increase the, 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 the denominator, yeah. right? The, the, the value you know, changes, right? So, if you can make it harder for the bad guys to get in, exactly. right? Yeah. And you can reduce their take, they're going to go somewhere else. And you're right, Rebecca, these reports, they always scare the life out of you because you've got names like Lockbit and, I don't know, Revil, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but, or Re-Evil, you know, Conti, Black Cat. You know, it's, it's insidious. But the, the other point you mentioned is $2.5 million paid, that's average. You had some good data by industry. It's amazing, agriculture was one of the top yeah, who ones. Who would have thought, right? Well, because it's, I guess because it's open, and yeah. you know, IOT, and they can nail exactly. it. Exactly. And there's a lot of you know, open holes. And then I think the largest was like 50 or even $70 million. I mean, these are massive numbers. Massive. You know, so that's why, you know, where do the, why do you rob banks? Well, that's where the money is. Well, that's just really astounding. So, as we look back every year, it seems to get worse and worse. <laughs> Are we ever going to think tip over to where it starts to get better? Maybe AI provides that, or maybe AI provides more holes. You have AI in your name, you know, in your last name, Kanea, AI. -er. <laughs> you know? oh, is that All our right, savior? This is a new one. <laughs> you should become an influencer <laughs> with, the, yeah, with that name. Exactly. <laughs> Look, I think so. There, there are a couple of stories here, right? I think if you have an NDR, you have completeness of coverage. Uh, George talked a lot about resilience, because to, to keep the bad guys out, you need a resilient cybersecurity infrastructure, which means going back to this basic concept of defense in depth. EDRs can become your first line of defense, NDRs become your second line of defense. Together, they can provide the most robust coverage out there. As you are thinking about the SOC and, and the battle being fought in the SOC, you do need to bring in a lot of automation to the SOC workflows for them to keep up with the barrage of alerts and events that people are throwing at the, the L1, L2, L3 analysts. So AI, both in terms of machine learning, where you are doing a lot of the correlation, automating all that in machine learning so you are not having your analysts go through that and doing that manually, so that's one piece. 
and then leveraging Gen AI in a big way in terms of your ability to go and do threat hunting through natural language queries, right? It just speeds up that entire process. You buy back time for your analysts to focus on the most egregious threats that you have in the network. And NDRs can play a huge role there as well, not just with detections, but the telemetry that we can bring, right? So we can tell you if there was a breach, what devices were involved in the breach, what data was transiting through those, uh, across those devices in the breach, what SQL transactions were running in that data pipe between those devices. So you can look at it and say, oh my God, somebody did a select all and I have an actual data breach and I need to now go report to the SEC or CISA or whatever, right? So automation and data, getting the, the right data at the right point in time in the hands of the SOC analysts, I think is what's going to help us stay ahead of the game. So there's been lots of exciting announcements here already at Falcon, including one by Extra Hop. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about, about how you're partnering with CrowdStrike here? We, have, we had two announcements today. One, uh, we are very grateful and, and proud to acknowledge that uh, we were recognized as the ecosystem innovator of the year by CrowdStrike. Uh, and it is related to the second announcement where we talk about the deep collaboration we have with CrowdStrike in their next-gen SIM initiative. And that's the innovation that led to the award as well. So as we are, we sat down with CrowdStrike a year ago when they were talking about this next-gen SIM strategy, uh, and both parties were very clear that this whole idea of a SOC triad is what we need to build this solution around. So we've been spending time with them figuring out what does, how do you package network detections and push it into the next gen SIM? How do you correlate network detections with endpoint detections? How do you automate that whole process? And how do you then automate the incident investigation and response process so we can really provide an out of the box solution to our customer for what I would call a next gen SOC? Um, so that's, uh, that's, what you have, uh, the, that's what the announcements are all about. So, first of all, congratulations. Um, Thank you. You got you know, a lot of really quality partners here, so that's quite a milestone. Um, I was here last week uh, in Las Vegas, because I can't get enough of Las Vegas, <laughs> and I can't get enough of Red Eyes. You're a um, you've got to, you're an addict. We, we were here uh, for uh, Oracle Cloud World, and Larry Ellison announced the beginning of the multi-cloud era. I, I had thought it, it began quite some time ago, but it's Larry. <laughs> So I'm curious as to your thoughts on multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. We coined the term years ago, super cloud, which was all about this abstraction layer that hides the underlying complexities of each individual cloud and creates a better experience for developers so they can have that common experience. But we always said security was the biggest risk to super, what we called super cloud, you know, this wonderful nirvana. How has hybrid cloud and multi-cloud affected uh, security and, and what are you and your partners doing to solve those problems? Yeah, I think it is what it has done, adoption of cloud, and 80% of enterprises you talk to have a multi-cloud strategy, so no one's going to a bespoke cloud. I think we are all on the same page yep. there. Uh, a lot of enterprises are going from a lift and shift cloud model to a cloud native application development model. So that adds more complexity because you have these uh, containers that are spinning up and down in all these Kubernetes clusters that are moving around and, and across these clouds. So the, the, the attack surface has become a lot more distributed. The, uh, the landscape is a lot more dynamic. VMs and containers spinning up and tearing down. Your consumers are coming in, remote workforce coming in from home. They are coming in through the Netscopes and the Zscalers and the Palo Altos of the world. So for us, our focus has been on providing that full visibility into everything that happens in the enterprise. So we have sensors deployed in every one of these public clouds. We have agents deployed in Kubernetes clusters so we can pull all this network telemetry. We have partnered with Netscope, another announcement uh, that was done by Netscope around their cloud tap. So all that remote worker traffic, we can now mirror that and bring that into our NDR. So take all of that, add what we already did with our data center visibility, we give you 360 visibility, everything that happens in your network infrastructure, right? 
And, and that complements, you might have endpoint agents in 50% of this infrastructure, but we give you full visibility into places where you have endpoints and places where you don't have endpoints, right? So that visibility, the ability to then drive threat detection through that visibility, package that telemetry into actionable data that can speed up the workflows in the SOC, that's what we are bringing to the table to try and make sense of this complexity that we have all gotten ourselves to. Yeah. I'm curious about how this show is, is going for you in terms of what you're getting out of being here, the kinds of conversations you're having, the kinds of connections you're making, the network you're, you're, you're enjoying here, especially as it relates to the theme of this year's, this year's conference, which is resilience by design. Right. 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 No, that's a great question. Look, first of all, this is a great place to meet a bunch of customers and uh, partners at the same time. Uh, the first thing I love is customers walking up and saying how much they love the product, which is, which is always very heartening to hear. Uh, there is an opportunity, we, so we have a booth right here behind the cube. Uh, there is an opportunity to bring more customers in and, and, and really expose them to what we can do and tell our story, which is a compelling story. Uh, so a lot of customer conversations. Uh, very interesting conversations with partners and, and particularly a, a lot of conversations with our friends at CrowdStrike as well. Uh, and, and just our, the ability to get the message out there that look, there is a way to address some of the security challenges we have. Uh, these were difficult problems in the past when you had a very fragmented set of solutions that you had to pull and integrate together. Now, we have reached a point of maturity both from an endpoint standpoint and a network standpoint where you have platforms that can consolidate the, 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 the tool sets. So you can take three products together and those three products, a next-gen SIM, a NOC, and a SOC, uh, and an NDR and an EDR, can give, provide you coverage for 80% or more of the MITRE attack TTPs that are out there. I mean, that's a pretty compelling value proposition. Three products you get 80% protection, right? So getting that message out there, I think to, to us uh, is, a, is a great opportunity at this show. Well, it's great to have you live, no mask zone. <laughs> That's yeah. right, I mean the last time yeah. it was all uh, Zoom yeah. calls right. and, and so. stuff, so hey, pleasure. Pleasure being Thank here and, and seeing you all live and hopefully we get to do this again. Yeah, Kanea absolutely. Vasani, CPO of Extra Hop. I, I like that name, it, 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 I already feel, I feel peppier just saying it. Oh, Thanks so much good. for coming Thank on you. theCUBE. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight. For Dave Vellante, stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Falcon 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in te enterprise tech news and analysis.